All right, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary. Our first one for 2022. Uh, I've tried to do the best I could to go over a couple comments and emails that I most recently have received. And yes, we are looking for a better 2022 than 2021. Last year, Banks and Ford are the stocks that moved. And actually, I should say Costco stock replacement strategy also did well. For all intents and purposes, Apple. Um, well, let me go to my list. That would be easier. Uh, Apple, Boeing, uh, CVS, Visa all stayed sideways. Does not help our strategy if it moves sideways. And then Baidu. Um, Disney, what's the other core holding? Um, Square and Under Armour all were down, basically. The good news is we have money and we can add shares of Disney, Under Armour, and, geez, come on, Hurley. Disney, Under Armour, Baidu, and Square Leaps at any time they look bullish. And we will add profits we've made on the way down to those positions before earnings coming up here uh, in January through February. With that said, last week I went over, does anyone know? What did I go over last week? I also did a version of it on Thursday, which I guess was last week, right? There you go, perfect. Last week I went over how to use valuations to determine a stock price. And I felt that was important. I felt that was important for you guys to understand why I say certain things, why I believe certain things. Um, it, it's really pretty simple. So today, I thought I was going to go through our stock prices, my PE ranges, and I was asked basically, hey, would you go through our core holdings and why you have us in certain positions. And I thought, you know what, makes perfect sense. So I'm just gonna go through Apple. And it's interesting because all the information I got from Apple comes from uh, FinViz. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put Apple in here. Apple. Uh, I got it from Yahoo Finance. I got it from from uh, Google Finance. I also had to do some historical looking at, but plain and simple, if I was to be looking at Apple right now, and I would say, all right, I want to find out what's my expected expected target price. They have it at 176.01. That's their expected target price. That's where they're saying, hey, it can realistically get to there. Short float, 69, 0.69%, not 1%, no threat of a short squeeze where too many people have shorted the stock, so they force them out. And the PE range. Ford P is 27, current P is 30, 
Usually that's flipped. Usually the Ford P is higher. And you want to validate and say, hey, you know, maybe that PE is not correct. Maybe it needs to be adjusted. For a general idea how I did that, you can go to My Hurley Investment. And if you click on Trade Findings and Adjustments or uh, the process, understand the risk involved in the pricing and valuation process. I have a whole article. I've got a video. I think we used uh, TMO the other day. Where's TMO? Yep. Uh, Use the fundamentals checklist. Really, I went through everything here so you could see exactly how I come up with the pricing for our stocks. But I'm just going to go through numbers today and speak on each individual one. Uh, we came up with a 32 to 34 PE for the, uh, the near future for Apple. When you use the next year uh, earnings per share price, we came up with that off of FinViz. We came up with that being at $6.18. When you look at the range and you multiply a 32 P by $6.18, we have a target price range or expected next year target price. So I should say expected stock price, let's say within one year. We come up with a range of 197.76 on the low end at 32 times future earnings to upwards $2.10, at $2.12. Uh, does anyone think that is unrealistic? Is that a pretty good price range for Apple? And when I work these numbers, Apple is trading at... Um, $172.17 over the weekend. So what do you guys think? Any questions on how I did that? Any expected, hey, Kevin, I disagree, I don't disagree? If I take a peek at that, that's $25 to the upside, or it has, what, one-seventh? So it has like, what, 16% upside or 14 point? six and then at two dollars and ten cents it has obviously a what a 38 48 dollar upside 38 dollar upside from there which is about 20 percent yes no do you agree with me do you don't agree with me is this a pie in the sky number what do you think give me a heads up is Apple a realistic price range? Can you guys see Apple trading within one year, $197 to $210? No comments. There we go. Thank you. It could easily it's make that number. Reasonable just came in. That seems like an accurate growth rate for, for Apple. Perfect. So that's basically all I've done. Yet I've worked numbers for all of the positions we are in, right? So if you look at Boeing, Boeing was a little more difficult because Boeing has a target price or future PE of somewhere between uh, 54 to 58. It's only because they have a 10 year running. And I really had to go and say, what's a realistic PE for Boeing? Because it's ridiculously higher. Let me see if I can find. Well, I had to go back historically and say, okay, Boeing's at 50, 51, 50, you know, 53. Kind of went back year-wise. And in all reality, somewhere between 50 and 58 seemed to be a realistic PE for Boeing because of where it was trading at. So 50 to 54, 
The next year's earnings were pretty reasonable at $4.87, which gives me a target price of $262.98 to $282.46. And Boeing's a little different because it has an all-time high of $410. Well, Kevin, what's going to move Boeing? Opening its factories, uh, getting its planes off. In fact, Boeing's this year's earnings, it could really easily hit somewhere between $10 to $12 per share, not just the $487. If it just gets its planes off its lots and into customers' hands, they've got roughly a thousand planes sitting there, or roughly about a year and a half worth of of planes that just haven't gotten out because of their problems. All right, Bank of America. Uh, I'm a little worried about Bank of America. When I went through this one, I was thinking, you know what, Bank of America is pretty well fully valued. A reasonable 18 to 22 PE for a bank is pretty common. Next year's earnings came up at $3.18. People ask me, Kevin, where do they get these next year's earnings per share that we see in Finviz? And it really comes from Schedule Ks. It really comes from um their earnings guidance numbers for where they're going to rotate in the future it comes through channel checks so boeing is going to make 318 dollars next 318 three dollars and 18 cents of earnings per share when you run their numbers i was thinking ah kind of fully valued i believe at 49 or 50 but the numbers come out to 57.12 to on the high side 69.96. So we still have some value left in Boeing. Baidu, one of my big favorites, right? Baidu, come on, Kevin. Why are we in this? I've got a very really interesting article about these uh, these companies. 153.33 was over the weekend as I was working these numbers for you. Baidu, I'm only willing to put an eight to 12 PE in Baidu, which is interesting because if you go back historically, let me see if I can't get Baidu in here. Historically, it's got a PE of like 25 and I actually came up with somewhere between 24 and 28 if you go back to 2021. So the fact I'm giving it a PE of only 12 to 8, I'm really, really being cheap. When you look at Baidu's earnings for next year, $56.94. And I went, huh. That seems high. So I'm going to lower it down to 38. Accounting for problems and, and those things that we're going through. I'm just like, hey, we've got a problem here, right? Numbers are a little out of whack. So I want to make it realistic. When I work these numbers through, Going an 8 to 12, half of the expected PE, I come up with 304 to 456. There is huge growth opportunity in Baidu, which is why I like it. Costco, we did really good on Costco last year. Leap long calls, rolled them on through. Costco was uh, 536.18 on Friday. Pretty interesting because the uh, 
the range was a 38 through like a 48 for their earnings per share next year. I didn't know how to value Costco, so I just condensed it into the middle, like a half a standard deviation. You couldn't compare it to Walmart or, I don't know, you can compare it to Walmart, uh, Target, no comparison there. So I had to use their own numbers. Uh, Costco's are $13.97, which gives me a range of Costco at $558.80 to $614.68. All right. Uh, people asked about CVS last year. It's not necessarily one of my core holdings, but it was an idea to play CVS for all the, the vaccinations that would occur. It's not really uh, a high flyer. In fact, it really doesn't move well at all. Not a great collar trading play, but it does give you the ability to make some money on it. And when you look at CVS, you come up with the price range of 115.64 to 132.16. Now, if I was looking at this for new investments for next year, being at 104 going up to 115 is only, you know, an $11 movement on the low side. I would feel a little bit worried because the protection might cost more than the growth opportunity. If it's on the high side at 132, we could do okay for it. But because it's only 115, CVS would not make my list next year as a new investment that we'd want to put into to play. Dollar General, same kind of idea, reopening play. Rather richly valued at 238.27. And I thought, wow, I wonder what the PE is going to be on Dollar General. Pretty easy. It was 22 to 23. Not a big PE, kind of what you would expect for a convenience store. Its earnings per share sit at $11.25, which gives us a rough PE of 247.50. Up to 253, which for what we do, collar trading, potential growth, doesn't even really have a 10% upside on it. A dollar general would not be somewhere I'd look to put more money on based on these numbers. On the flip side, Disney, oh, ho, 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 ho. took a bit of a beating on it last year, made some great money on the way down have some shares to add into certain areas. I am going on Disney at a standard 34 to 36, but I also put in here a 44, more of a entertainment Netflix um, peacock type of very low end starting out valuation. And I can't wait to share some of these with you because it really it's like, ah, common sense. This could be amazing. Lower than expected earnings per share next year because they're not giving the benefit of the doubt. But doing simple numbers, 170, 74 on the low end, 213, 18 on the high end. And if we go to the bigger number, if it gets any kind of kick or valuation upgrade due to Disney Plus. Now we're talking about 246.84. I can see it reaching any one of those target numbers. 34 to 36 is just a standard reopening, standard PE ratio. 561 is down about $3 from the, the higher side of it. 44 would be reopening with some movies, a couple billion dollar movies in there. 
Disney can move from 157 to 246, very easily gain basically 40% growth year to date. That's one of my winners for next year. Ford, Kevin, we finally made it on Ford. It's finally moving. We're going to run on this one till forever. <laughs> well, Ford was sitting at $24.44. It hit 25 and it really bounced down. Uh, Ford has a pretty low 13 to 14 ish PE. I'm going to stick 15 in there for, for uh, just, you know, the electric vehicle cars that are coming up, maybe giving it a little boost. And this is why we sold off half of Ford. On the low side, we are looking at $25.87, $1.50 from where it's at right now. We shrunk and sold off positions at $24.60 ish. Uh, maybe it was 2480 ish uh, last week because Ford's fully valued. Even changing the PE to 14, we're only looking at 2786. And really, it makes Ford worthwhile if it does get an electronic vehicle boost. And then we're looking at 2985. For this reason, we took half of the shares of Ford off. And we took it off at somewhere between 40 cents, 20 to 40 cents higher than it's at right now. And it's just our belief that we see Ford fully valued. It's no longer the opportunity that we used to see. JP Morgan, will it follow? Um, will it follow Bank of America? And a quick question came in. EVs may take from fossil fuel vehicles, making it a net wash. Um, so possibly, but probably not. I don't see electric vehicles moving as fast as some people think they're going to. I also like Ford has hybrids, but more importantly, what everyone forgets, anyone know where about a third of the revenues come from? Where does a third of Ford revenues come from? other than the sale of their cars. Financing. A third of their revenues are coming from financing. So will it take fossil fuel vehicles making it a net wash? Um, I would think their financing is where their, their real opportunity comes from. Um, I also, my belief, Bill, is that you're just not going to see the growth of electric vehicles like everyone says. I think the ten last 10 years has proven it. Well, Tesla sold a million vehicles. Well, on, you know, 17 million in the U.S., it's kind of impressive. But when you go worldwide and we're talking about 150 to 165 million vehicles worldwide, you know, a million doesn't interest me because... Here in the United States, I would say only half of those vehicles were sold here in the United States. The other half were overseas. So who knows? Um, interesting comment. Snow Adams and VA may have squelched electronic vehicle sales. It'll be interesting to see. I, As for me, Ford is fully valued. We took some of our profits last year. Uh, JP Morgan. When I did this, it was trading at 167.16. Uh, we gave it a valuation of 16 through 18, a little bit less than, uh, than Bank of America because it is a little more dependent on trading or a variable return. It does have $11.96 as its earnings per share. And the growth that we saw on JP Morgan is 191.36 to 215.28. Again, we like the banks going into next year. With that said, Square, which is now Block, what a pitiful drop it had last year. 141.54, it's even worse today. 
this was an interesting one because as you looked at its PE, I kind of called BS, right? I took a look and I'm like, eh, I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing. Square or Block Inc. does not have the PE of 151. A Ford PE of 7784. I wasn't sure where to, to push this one. I went to history on block as well to see the PE where it's been in the past. Sat back and said, man, 200 PE down to 132. Small business is taking a hit. What are the possibilities? Um, I really came through. And as I chose where I was going to put square, I put it at 125. To 135. Earnings were rather low. Only a dollar eighty-three because smaller business didn't take off like it should. And I was worried if we had some problems. I came up with 228.75 through 247.05. Oh, and block is 100% based on small business coming back. And to hit the 125, it needs new uh, new growth. It needs about a 13.2% growth rate in the small business. And that's just going to try to make up for what was probably lost last year. So the numbers look good but the story does not. Under Armour, oh, so good. This one could be amazing. 1985, it's getting even cheaper. We might be adding a little bit of shares. 28 to 32 is a reasonable PE. Its earnings also seemed a little low to me, but I'm gonna take it only 79 cents going into next year. When I was worried, I'm thinking, man, things aren't looking great. 12 PE, uh, excuse me, 28 PE gives it a $22.12 growth. On the high side, I came up with 25.28. And I thought, huh, I don't know if I really like it. What would I have to do to get to a 27? dollar and 50 cents where it was just at the other day and that equals a 34.4 pe which it's been to in the past man visa didn't move last year what the crap is going on with visa i worked the numbers over the weekend or on friday at 216 again visa is not a really high pe flyer we came up with 32 to 36. That seemed a little low, but I was going to stick with it. $8 and 41 cents. I'm like, ah, maybe it's time for us to be out of Visa, right? Maybe Visa is not going to add up to where I need it to be. Numbers come up to 269.12 to 302.76. It's a reopening trade, a world growth story. Visa's just fine. And my last one I did for you was Facebook. We have a couple of you in it. Uh, Friday, 331.79. Got crushed again today. It has a 23.72, current and future. And so I went through some of the marketing. I'm like, okay, we got to give it a little bit of growth, moderate growth, and high growth. I thought, huh, 1423, amazing earnings. Very low growth for this year, 355.75. It traded that into last year. Moderate growth, 398.44. And a high growth going into this year, 
I mean, it's doing everything online, 455.36. I really like Facebook going into this year. Those are core holdings. I've got two more I'm going to share with you on Thursday or have Keeb share with you on Thursday. Are there any questions on how I'm coming up with any of these numbers and my thought process of where I think they can go or if they're a good value for next year? If you were to ask me, uh, CVS and Dollar General are not investments going into next year. Ford, I'm also squeamish on. So Ford, we already cut our position in half last year to pay taxes on it. Uh, actually, it might have been this year. I don't know when we cut the, the Ford shares, but we cut Ford shares in half. Any comments? <laughs> Kevin, you know Under Armour has traded as high as 42 in the past. Uh, yes, I know that. But that was in the past and kind of like Crocs that traded at 120 at one time. Uh, I just don't see the past relating to current. Any other questions? Kevin, Disney 44 PE is extremely low for online entertainment. So I didn't really go through online entertainment, which I'm probably assuming is gonna be uh, Draft Kings and so forth. I kind of just went against Netflix and where it started. I looked at some of the other ones as Peacock and Paramount Plus, Comcast. Uh, I went on the low side at 44. If you want to really go with something realistic, a 62 to a 68, if I was to stick 62 in there, let's see, 62 times Disney $5.61, that gives you a price target of $347.82. And I can't realistically make a price target for Disney at 347.82 and feel good about it. So that's why I chose 44. I know it's on the low side. Um, I've got to be realistic here. You know, if I started sticking out Disney out at 347.82, my clientele would think I'm off my rocker. So yes, I know. A 62 to 68 to 75 PE is reasonable, but Disney is not an online entertainment company only. So uh, I felt 44 at 246.84 is about the most I could stretch that valuation realistically. And considering uh, all the other things it does for its toys, obviously its cruises, which are screwed right now. It's uh, parks, which are actually really coming back nicely. The most I could stretch it was 44 and up to 246.84. I can't make a justification for 62, 68, 75. A 62 uh, PE puts it at 347.82. And there's no way I could tell you Disney's going to go up to $347.82 in the next year. It just doesn't work that way. That's not what valuations are for. Great question. I hope that helps you understand. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, is JP Morgan your best choice for financial performer for 2022? Um, so as I work my numbers, I did Goldman Sachs, I did City and Morgan Stanley, which just aren't moving. Wells Fargo still has issues. Really, uh, on Thursday, I'm going to go through Zions Bank and Key Corp. Because actually, it seems like the regionals are have more growth opportunity than the multinationals. Um, but if I was going to put money into a, a bank stock, 
Bank of America, if I have, if I've got 50,000 or less, Bank of America, if I've got 200,000, JP Morgan. Remember for collar trading, you need at least uh, 300 shares. With that said, uh, 191, 167, 167 minus 191, $24 divided by 167. We're looking at a 14.3% gain on the low end for JP Morgan based on next year. Uh, 49 minus 57 equals eight divided by 49. We're looking at a 16.3% upside gain on Bank of America. So actually, Bank of America has a higher percentage low-end return attached to it than J.P. Morgan, but they're all a little bit different. You know, Bank of America is more commercial real estate slash um, trade desk where JP Morgan is multinational real estate slash trade desk slash IPOs slash big corporate lending. So they kind of hit two different sectors in the financial world, but uh, Bank of America has about a 2% more upside growth as a percentage than, uh, than JP Morgan does. Great question. Any other questions that I can get for you on what we have here? Really like Apple, huge growth opportunity in Boeing. Really like Bank of America, huge, huge, huge growth opportunity in Baidu. Costco's approaching fully valued. The next run that we run on our leap long calls and a profit, when I take those off, we will not be getting into Costco for a while. CVS Dollar General should be ejected out of the portfolio. Disney, great opportunity. Ford has run its run. Um, we've lightened up on half of our shares. JP Morgan, great opportunity. Big opportunity in Square. May not come this year. That's why we have two-year leaps out to January 2023. And we may have to push those farther out in time. Uh, Under Armour, good opportunity again. I'm just... Uh, Little puzzled or scratching my head on that one. Visa, great opportunity on it. Facebook, huge opportunity on it. So I like where our core holdings are at. Now, uh, I'm going to make this question, be well, I'm going to make the statement because someone asked me about it. Kevin, with higher interest rates, doesn't that kill? NASDAQ um, NASDAQ stocks. So someone please tell me, higher interest rates, what does that mean for companies in general? What does that mean for companies in general when we're looking at the higher interest rates and how is that going to hurt companies? There you go. It costs more to make their goods. Uh, not necessarily, but you're on the right line. What's the problem with higher interest rates and why people believe it kills NASDAQ stocks? There you go. Higher cost to borrow for R&D, right, slash product. Um, I don't want to say product, product creation, but product manufacturing and distribution, right? But really, it's like, ha, huh, we've got to go borrow the money at a higher rate to build what they build. So, Taking a quick look, 
what are my two big NASDAQ stocks I have in our core holdings? Of course, right? Apple and Facebook. Good job. Boy, and that was quick. Three of you really jumped in there. So here's my next question. How much money does Apple need to borrow to make their iPhones? How much money does Apple have to borrow to make their iPhones? I love it. None, zero, not a penny. Out of all the stocks that you're looking at, interest rates and higher interest rates do not affect Apple. Their stores are already in place. Their distribution lines are in place. They build here. They build in Europe. They build in China. They don't have to go from here to here to there to there if they don't want to. Anytime you see a sell-off on Apple because of the three to four possible rate hikes next year, it is a buying opportunity because they only have like $220 billion on hand with very little debt borrowing for some bonds. Okay, how about Facebook, right? Well, Kevin, with all due respect, you're screwed on Facebook. I already heard someone say that. Maybe that was Cy. By the way, guys, welcome Cy Hendricks. He's new here. Cy, pleasure to have you here with us tonight to hear you what we're talking about, what we're seeing. Uh, Diddy's here. Lance, you're back again. Nice to see you, Lance. But please welcome Cy as uh, one of our new guys. Facebook. Not borrowing money. In fact, their cash per share on what? $12.83 per share on $2.81 billion shares. Golf. If I do my math, it's like they got $40 billion on cash on hand. And a book to share about forty-seven thirty-nine. They are cash heavy. They're selling all their stuff online. It's advertising. It's gaming. It's stupid gnomes that I go hide around my yard for my wife to find out that I've got sixteen gnomes in groups of four putting trees and rose bushes and chickens and and, and stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, that relates to some, some webinars from last year. Anytime you see Facebook going on sale, because we're going to have two to three, three to four inch types next year, it is a buying opportunity at a 25 PE to 28, which is a very real, realistic range. Their price range is 355 to 398, and they're trading at 331. You're looking at a 12 to 20 percent upside at a 32, which is a more realistic PE for where they should be. Their price range is 455 dollars and 36 cents, roughly 124 dollars. Excuse me, yep, 124 dollars higher than where they're at right now, or another 35 percent higher than where they should be right now. Um, great question. Higher interest rates will not kill our NASDAQ stocks, which is something Keith and I have gone over and why we have these two is because we don't want to be um, in, uh, in these type of stocks. I see two highs. Welcome, Cy. Welcome. Hello. Lots of laughs. Hi, I love Meta. They should go higher. So, Cy, our new guy, also agrees with me. If he agrees with me, enough said, right? <laughs> I see Russ and I see who do I have here? I see Bill Brandner, uh, Babu Gupta. So, you guys have been with me for 
20 years. Yeah. Yeah, right. There, wait a second, Kevin. Let's talk this out. And Cy just called me a dork. Way to go. All right. Uh, let's finish up for tonight. I'm taking too much time here. Uh, big picture. 2022 starts with an overdue thud. 2021 ended with a bang, except for the last week. Do go through and read what the briefing.com is talking about. Some really interesting points that uh, when they're talking about interest rate hikes, this is where you're going to see. I've got the links in there to see what you're looking for and what you could worry about. I also have Y charts pulse. What they see in the market, what is moving us with our, our uh, economic reports, some great information. Again, just another perspective other than mine on what we're looking at and why some things should move the way they should. If you look at the Dow as a whole, as I take a peek at it, it's bullish, but it's at the tip of turning. We're just about crossing over below 50, which would be anything below 50 would be a bearish signal. We're just about crossing below the 50-day simple moving average. And your five and your 20 would just be about having your bearish crossovers. We're just touching the RS, uh, excuse me, the MACD, the 12.26.9. We're almost bearish, but not quite. Will we pull this movement and see big money come back in? We bounce tire there. We bounce tire there. What are we going to see? Or do we have to come all the way down and touch the 200 day for our bounces higher from there? Interesting to see. Technically, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is bullish, but it's hanging on by a thread. That's some P500. Very interesting, broke the 50 day today. Definitely bearish on our crossovers here. Just have our crossover bearish here, crossover bearish here. For all intents and purposes, the S&P 500, our benchmark is technically bearish right now. Today as we speak on the 11th, right? Abraham, I'll take a look at that. Uh, if it's okay, I'll do that on Thursday. And all right, here we go. NASDAQ. <laughs> NASDAQ really looks bad. Definitely bearish. Definitely bearish. Definitely bearish. But big money is starting to kick in. The Williams percent R is a medium statistic. The Williams percent R is kind of what I would be looking at for some type of uh, bounce higher, but we are definitely bearish on the NASDAQ. It is a pretty quiet week this week. Uh, really, Friday is the big one with retail sales. It'll move our markets. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to deal with uh, inflation, CPI numbers on Wednesday, PPI numbers on Thursday. Retail sales will make or break our week for this week on the economic reports. Uh, as for earnings, KB Homes on, on Wednesday, Delta Airlines on Thursday, BlackRock, Citigroup, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo on Friday. We start our uh, first week of our bank stocks as we report earnings, and it'll run through the next two weeks. Uh, long put protection has been added to a couple certain stocks, but for the most part, we're letting some things run have a very interesting article on how Utah collected nearly 14 billion in tax revenue in 2021. If you want to see how how state governments maybe should be running or using their surplus for a year when COVID really shut things down 2021, here's an interesting article on things that your governments and your own states might be looking at. Found a pretty interesting article on why the bull market will stay alive in 2022, plus eight uh, stocks that people can buy right now. I somewhat agree with it. Please do read through this one. Go back to the 13th in my, uh, where I kind of rip on Kathy Wood. You'll see I go through some stocks there.
but I find it rather interesting. I think this is probably an old article that people should know better than, but I do like the fact that it had Disney in here. And in general, for general market understanding, it was a pretty good uh, article. Uh, yes, we just sold out on Ford. So of course they announced the dividend. Uh, we did not sell it completely. We sold off half of our shares. Uh, Ford will now pay a 10 cent dividend, which is a Ford yield of 1.68%. Doesn't reach that two, two and a half mark. And it's not at 4% where it's a must own type of stock. If you're in at and if you're in Verizon, there are your 4% plus must own stocks for a dividend. They are not worth protecting. And I'm saying that on at and which has had its butt kicked horribly, lost half its value. But both of those would be a leap covered call position out a year where it's like you get a, another dividend and a half. So you can make upwards to somewhere between 9.86% return up to 11.2% return by just going out in time and putting a covered call on that stock ownership. And the last one I have, Alibaba. Charlie Munger is teaching a market a lesson again. Uh, you can relate this to uh, Baidu, partially because Baidu owns a third of Alibaba. People ask me all the time, Kevin, why don't you own JD, Tencent, Alibaba, IQ? Um, because Baidu owns 30 to 66% of all four of those companies. It's like telling me, Kevin, why don't you own the chip stocks that make Apple iPhones? My opinion, because Apple kicks butt and pays much more. But if you want to understand how Charlie Munger is viewing Alibaba, which would also go for IQ, Tencent, JD, uh, Baidu, this is a great article to go through and read. It's basic understanding of buy low, sell high. It's basic understanding of fundamental analysis, where it's been, where it can go to, if it's still worth it. Um, one of the big pushes I have when people are like, Kevin, I can't believe you would be in Baidu. It was only the biggest second economy Google in the world, so to speak. Really, all I need to see is a 3% short float. A short float is nothing more than a 15% increase on short float covered, uh, covering on 1%. If it's 3.14%, we've got a 45 potential increase for a short squeeze or short covering that would move the stock 45% higher. That puts it in that 225 range overnight, a couple week period of time. It's all I need to see to feel comfortable with a huge opportunity investing internationally in the second largest economy in the world. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, and then I've got one other kind of stupid article. Uh, Dr. Gupta, this is for you, and Ma, this is for you. Uh, unexpected way physicians invest like billionaires. And all it's talking about is that uh, you can now invest in art or another physical commodity. But pretty interesting. Uh, I found it interesting, and I knew I've got some doctors in my group here. So I threw it on in here. All right, with that said, guys, give me some questions. What questions do you have that I can answer for you? Are there any questions you have? I always like to leave anywhere from five to 10 minutes at the end of the, the, uh, the commentary to give you guys uh, the time to ask me or to tell me something I've done wrong, a question on what I see, a banter session back and forth. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, Yes, that's why I have it here for you. Lance, when are your price targets going to happen? 
Lance, I don't have a freaking clue. The market is a variable market. It does not give average returns. Average returns are the kiss of death. An average return does not mean that you have portfolio growth. These are just a metric that we use to justify if the stock pricing is cheap or not. Being a, a Warren Buffett value investor, this is part of uh, what I do to pick the stocks that I want to be vested in. Uh, technically speaking, it should be these price targets within the next year. But as we saw for Ford, it might sit for two and a half years, move the last six months. Um, there is no timing. Timing is a fool's game, so I could not give you a date, a time frame and expectation. Uh, I wouldn't even play that way. So good question, but I don't have an answer for you. Mod, and the entire downdraft to buy, you were able to pick up more shares. So yes, and actually what I really did is I've held on to cash. If most of you have looked in your accounts, we added a couple hundred shares of Baidu at 200, and then I've held off. Almost did it at 166, would like to do it at 135. It is sitting higher than that right now. Um, we are cash heavy for the opportunity to buy more shares of Baidu and to buy more shares of Disney. Uh, I've held on to that cash because I wasn't comfortable in finding a bottom. So we did have some Baidu added, but I've got more capital available to deploy uh, because we should be able to pick up shares 100% paid for, like 20, 30% more shares of Baidu. I just have to purchase the shares and, and put that money to work. Sai, any emerging medical stocks you have your eye on? So much grant money flooding into healthcare. Uh, not at all. <laughs> And so I'm interested in going over uh, one that Keith told me about, but I'm going to discuss that with you on Wednesday over lunch, um, partially because you will probably be uh, more experienced in that area versus uh, what I might say to uh, the general public on trading. But that is also a very good question. All right, well, there are three good questions. Uh, any other questions for you guys? All right, guys, with that said, I don't see anything else coming in. I appreciate you being here tonight. Again, Lance, welcome back. Cy, glad to have you. I do hope this was helpful for you guys. I will have this posted at myhurleyinvestment.com, uh, most likely tomorrow morning. So myhurleyinvestment.com, it'll pop up in the top left corner. It'll push those off to the side. I've got years worth of notes and videos here. Um, expect this if you'd like to go over those numbers. If you want to print these numbers off, if you want to get a hold of them, uh, tonight's webinar will be posted at myhurley.com tomorrow before lunch, lunch Mountain Standard Time. Guys, I appreciate you being here. Welcome to the uh, commentary for those that are new. I'm going to run on you. I'll see you next Monday night. And for those that are looking at trade findings and adjustments, most likely held by Keeve this week, will be Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Guys, have a great night. Appreciate you being here. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.